Welcome to the MSU Deer Labs online seminar series brought to you by Mississippi State University Extension Service and the Forest and Wildlife Research Center. My name is Steve Damaris and I'm the Taylor Chair in Applied Big Game Research and Instruction at Mississippi State University. Thanks for joining me today. There's a lot of regional variation in body and antler size of deer across Mississippi and it's concerning to some people and uh, to biologists like myself and Bronson Strickland and also biologists within the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries and Parks, we felt like we pretty much understood why there was this variation, but the agency has to deal with public opinion and the public oftentimes wants uh, proof. And so they tasked Bronson and I with uh, a long-term effort to figure out what was the cause of this regional variation in antler size and body size. Is it due to nutrition or is it due to genetics? One of the reasons why body size of animals varies is called Bergman's rule. And this is shown in uh, this figure here, which was research done on moose in Sweden that uh, body mass or the size of the moose increases with cooler temperatures or more northern latitudes. And this has to do with uh, the mass to volume uh, ratio of the animal. A bigger, heavier animal is more able to keep itself warm during the colder uh, winters. Uh, and so in northern latitudes, they tend to be larger. Well, that's not the case here in Mississippi. We don't have a problem with uh, cold winters, but we do have a lot of regional variation in soil resource regions. Here we represent three of these regions. The first one I want to talk about is the delta presented in red in the map of the state. And the delta is actually a mis misnomer. Uh, it's actually the Mississippi alluvial plain. It's uh, where the Mississippi River, it's the floodplain. Uh, it's made up of very rich clay soils and agriculture predominates in this region. The second soil resource region I want to talk about is the Lurs or the Lurs Hills. This is a windblown soil. It's uh, windblown origin and it's uh, fertile, very loamy soils and there's quite a mix of, of agriculture but also a lot of timber in this region. And the third soil resource region that we're going to talk about today is the lower coastal plain. And this area used to be uh, associated with a, a, a larger footprint of an ocean and it's a sandy, uh, sandy soils, low quality sandy soils, very uh, highly drained and the main land use is timber managed pine plantations in particular. So here, now that we've understood a little bit more about the Delta, the Lurse, and the Lower Coastal Plain, these three soil resource regions of Mississippi, this figure shows how antler size varies among these three regions. In the Delta, a mature five-year-old and older buck has about 136 inches of Boone and Crockett score. In the Lurse Hills, it's around 130. And if you're a mature buck in the lower coastal plain, you might be around 118. So there's roughly a 20 inch difference in the average antler size of mature bucks among these three regions. And that's a pretty significant difference. And if you're a hunter, you're going to uh, be envious of bucks that are harvested in the Delta if you're hunting in the lower coastal plain. And that's really the motivation for the State Wildlife Agency to ask us to conduct this research, is to address, is this variation in antler size due to genetics or nutrition? The difference is also uh, seen in body size. There's about a 44 pound difference in four-year-old bucks between uh, the Delta, close to 198 pounds, and uh, 
down in the lower coastal plain, way down around 153 pounds. So that's a, a lot of difference in body weight. Now, as far as antlers and body size, there are three factors that can affect these variables. And, and let's talk specifically about antlers. Age is a critically important factor. This figure shows the percentage of maximum Boone and Crockett score on the y-axis running from uh, zero to 100%. At one year of age, a yearling buck is going to grow antlers that are about 25% of his ultimate antler size. By two years of age, he's going to grow antlers that are about 60% of his ultimate maximum antler size. So basically he's more than doubling his size from one to two years of age. By three years of age, his rate of increase of his antler size isn't quite doubling, but he goes from 60% up to about 75% of his ultimate maximum antler size. At four years of age, another big jump, uh, he's close to 90, 91% of his maximum antler size at four years of age. And then at five years of age, he's reached about 95 or 96% of uh, his largest antler size. But if you want a buck to grow his biggest set of antlers, you're talking about needing to let him grow and live until six years of age. And that's, a, that's the average point at which Whitetail bucks fulfill their expectation, their genetic potential for antler size. And between six and say 10 years of age, as long as the buck is living in quality habitat and doesn't get sick, he's going to maintain that large set of antlers for a number of years. And at some point he's going to reach the point where he's uh, his teeth are worn out or he's just getting too old to be uh, surviving very well and his antler size will start declining. But provided there's good quality habitat, you can expect a buck to maintain his antler size, the maximum antler size for four to five years. Now there is annual variation that, that exists and, and I mentioned as long as they're good quality habitat and he doesn't get sick. Here's an example from our friend Dave Hewitt at uh, Texas A&M Kingsville in South Texas. Photo on the, the left is a buck that was uh, live captured at five years of age and he scored 210 inches, a really beautiful animal. And then the next year at six years of age, they uh, live captured him again and he had dropped down to 166 inches. That's a pretty massive drop in antler size. But then at seven, he went back up to near the original score at five years of age. He's up at 208. And you can see if you look close in this photo, he actually died at seven years of age. But he had returned to his original large antler. So the presumption here is that he got sick when he was a six-year-old during that time in which he was growing his antlers. After recovering from whatever his sickness was, he grew another set of really large antlers as a seven-year-old, but then uh, subsequently perished, uh, possibly due to hemorrhagic disease late in the summer. It looks like he's still in velvet, which would be indicating that he had died late summer. So age is really important. They need to get to six years of age to produce the largest antlers. Let's talk about nutrition now. You are what you eat. You've heard that all your life, and it's true. The better quality diet you eat, the better condition you will be in. This figure of some research done in research pens in Texas shows uh, two groups of bucks. The group that was fed the 8% protein diet versus a group that was fed a 16% crude protein diet. And you can see at one year of age, there was about well, a relatively small difference, but maybe uh, 10 inches in Boone and Crockett's score. At two years of age, it's, the difference is widening. 
And out to four years of age, when this study was stopped, there was about a 20 inch difference in Boone and Crockett score based on the diet quality. The 8% crude protein diet bucks scored about an 85 and the 16% uh, crude protein diet bucks scored about 105. So about a 20 inch difference in antler score. And this is all about nutrition. These animals were all in the same facility. Some of them had 8% diet. Some of them had 16% diet. So nutrition matters. It affects the size of antlers that can be grown. Now you see also in this figure that uh, the antlers got bigger from one to two and two to three and three to four, regardless of the, the diet quality. The 8% protein diet, 16% protein diet, they all increased in antler size as they got older, but the actual diet, the nutrition that they experienced affected how much of an antler they grew. And the third factor that affects antlers uh, is genetics. And when I talk about genetics, I'm talking about the genetic or the DNA potential for antler development. DNA determines the potential size and shape of a buck's antler, just like for humans, it determines how tall we grow. DNA determines our eye color, our hair color, uh, our musculature, thickness of our bones. There's a lot of things that the DNA controls provided you are fed an adequate diet. Genetics definitely affect antler development of an individual animal. This photo on the left shows a buck that had a very unusual non-typical rack and uh, kind of diamond shaped and with lots of side kickers. He was actually harvested by a hunter here in Mississippi and our predecessor here at Mississippi State, Harry Jacobson, collected semen from him and did some controlled breeding, artificial insemination with some, some female deer in his research pens and produced uh, some offspring, both male and female. And the photo on the right is of a buck that is the great grandson of the sire on the left. Now he doesn't look exactly like him, but you can see that he has some of the same physical characteristics of antler development, kind of a diamond shape uh, to the, the conformation and he has those kickers on, the, on his right antler. So genetics definitely determine the antler characteristics of an individual buck. Uh, these two bucks are the same age and were raised in our research facility. And the buck on the left has 10 point genes and the buck on the right has eight point genes. Both of these bucks are the same age. They have the same nutritional background and one is an eight point and one is a 10 point. That's a genetic difference between the individual deer. They are expressing their genetic potential fully because they're on good, have a good diet. One last point I want to make about genetics and, and antler development is the male and the female deer contribute equally to the DNA for antler development. The buck and the doe both determine what size antlers a subsequent offspring is going to have. So genetics determines an individual male's potential for antler development. He has to have adequate nutrition to fully express that genetic potential. And he has to have adequate age to allow him to get the largest antlers that he can grow. So age, nutrition, and genetics are all important in antler development. 